Several people have asked about painting the eyes on the bugs, and so I want to kind of give a little bit of demonstration on that. I use a, this all-purpose sealer uh, by Delta Creative. What it does is uh, just a coat of the sealer with the brush. You just want to apply it all around the bug. It's um, it actually serves a purpose of creating a seal on all the porous areas of the fly so that you can actually uh, end up putting the ceramic paint on the fly once it's dried. It has a, both a benefit and uh, kind of a downside. The benefit is is that it completely seals off the foam um, and it actually helps the bug float a little bit higher in the water. But in my honest opinion, um, it also is a little bit of a downside because the, the whole concept of this bug is that it sits in the surface film of the water. So I actually like to sit, have it sit a little bit lower on the water, um, more like a natural fly. So, but um, just to get the eyes on as far as just creating kind of a different look, first you'll seal it with that sealer. You'll allow that to dry. You can either put it, put it on a drying wheel, kind of like I have here, or just under a heat lamp. Um, this is a halogen lamp here, so it produces quite a bit of heat. Uh, and it'll dry pretty quickly under that lamp. And the next step will actually apply the eyes using um, uh, either a cut off nail or a dowel rod uh, with a ceramic paint. One thing I didn't mention earlier about this, if you're gonna do this, you wanna do multiples at a time. Uh, you wanna have some just basic art brushes. This is one that's been cut off over the years to uh, just apply it a little bit easier um, on the sealant. The sealant does provide kind of a waterproof coating on the fly. Um, you'll definitely want some kind of water to rinse these brushes off after you've applied several. But you want to do multiple at a time. And if you've got several bugs that you're already uh, got set up to, to run, then you know, pick um, at least four, maybe five or six, and then you can kind of do it in a stage where you have multiples drying at a time. It, it makes it much more efficient. There's several things you'll want to, um, to use to apply. Some people use uh, brass rods, others will use wooden dowels. Um, I actually took some old nail heads and um, drilled holes into a few wooden dowels and then numbered them based on the sequence that I use. Number one is my first application. It's the largest, it's kind of a roofing nail. Had a nice uh, round flat head and then the, they just kind of go down by size uh, from there, just enough that I can get the uh, larger outside and then a pupil inside. May want multiple colors. Uh, sometimes I only use two or three of these just to get the size that I want. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is pick the color scheme uh, that you want. 90 times uh, out of 100, I'm gonna choose the black for a base uh, then with an, a white outline or potentially a colored outline like an orange or a yellow um, with a secondary color behind it and then another black pupil for the eye. And as it, um, as it cures, and um, then this one, this one here is a uh, black, white, black. It's very basic. This one does have a single coat of varnish on it so it gives it a little bit of that shine. Uh, if you're going to fish with them, they need at least three to four coats of varnish just to keep them from peeling off over time. It also provides them uh, a, a way to keep from being more waterproof and coming off the foam. They will wear off over time, but not like uh, the traditional Sharpie or Magic Markers that I use for just basic eyes, which the nice thing about the Sharpies is you can reapply it even if you're out on the water. You can take an orange and a black, and for most colors, you can use the orange as a base layer and the black as a pupil and reapply that. And I have a few that are already uh, kind of set up like that now. Um, this one you can see was marked up with a fluorescent orange and then the orange base and a black pupil with just a few little highlights on the bottom of the top. Really, it's more. Like I said, for the fishermen, my dad never really even used any kind of markings on them. He would just fish them based on the color of the foam itself. And again, he liked the traditional orange um, legs with the yellow body uh, because it actually 
shows a little bit of different contrast on the water and shows up a little bit better. But that is uh, kind of the traditional, uh, traditional model of the fly that he used more than anything else. And we'll go through the next few steps uh, one by one. I keep a paper towel handy um, just to wipe the nail heads off. You can just take your, once it's complete, it's kind of hard to do with just one hand, but once it's complete, just put it onto there and just wipe it off. And you can use also acetone if you needed to, but this just seems to be the easiest way and it gets it pretty clean pretty quickly. Because this is acrylic paint, you want to make sure to shake it up pretty well before you use it. And if you do that, uh, one thing that actually comes in handy is you can take the tops off and you can use the base of the top as a, a collection point for your ink or your uh, paint as well. And then it just makes it a little bit easier when you go on to the next step. Uh, I'm actually going to step up to one of the closer sizes. I'm going from a, a one to a three here. I'm just going to dip it down in this paint. And then as I come up here, I'm just going to adjust by using my finger and apply right at the front of the fly. I don't want to cover up all that black ink. I just want it to be kind of uh, towards the front to make it look like the bug's looking forward. And we'll rotate it over and we'll do the exact same thing on the far side there. Just try to match them up as best as possible. Once it, uh, once it dries, it'll kind of look like a pupil uh, sticking out and then your third application will be another black dot on there for the pupil. The varnish is also the Ceramicote Delta Creative, um, just the gloss exterior, interior varnish. You can get um, a clear coat varnish that's not as glossy, but I do like that glossy finish. Um, as I mentioned, this one has got one coat already on it, so you can kind of see that shine once it clears. Once it dries, it dries very clear. Uh, it does have a nice shine to it. And um, I just keep a little bit stored in a plastic cup just to be able to access it and then use just a very cheap uh, craft butt brush uh, for application. Just make sure you rinse them off or otherwise they'll get really stiff and crusty on the brush and end up breaking the tips off. So um, this one will have its second coat on and then I'll put it on the drying wheel. I just get a light application of the varnish and then just make sure that you're applying it directly to the same area, just enough to cover and it'll give kind of a hazy finish. Spin your vise around same thing on the other side. And like I said, it'll just kind of give it a hazy finish. And then once it dries, it'll dry real nice and clear. I don't know if you can see that, but um, then we'll take it and put it on the drying wheel so that it doesn't sag or create a bubble on one side or the other. And there you can see we've got several drying at once. Um, some are just the beginning steps of the actual uh, sealant and then a couple have a base coat and then we'll move on to other steps as each one dries. So for the final part of the application I'm going to take the smallest uh, nail head, this is my number four, and just dip it into the black paint there. And then again we're going to try to apply this right on the front, almost the same spot that you originally applied the first white dot just to kind of give it a pupil and flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. This one will kind of have a forward facing eyeball. And the study of the hand there, the easier it is to apply. You don't want it to be uh, too large to cover up all of that white area, but you do, you can uh, arrange it accordingly to the back or the lower portion or the front to make the eye looking whatever direction you want. Uh, it's the same thing that I set up on my vise here. You can see kind of a downward looking eye on my vise. This is actually a, 
a three-tone. It's a black, yellow, orange, black, uh, which I'll use sometimes on various different bugs from a tan base or a brown base uh, that gives it just a little different eye color and makes it look a little bit like some of the fish that are out there while swimming around. And then as we did with the chartreuse bug, once that completely dries, then we'll start applying the um, varnish to that to give it a nice clear coat. And you'll, like I said, you'll need uh, multiple applications of the varnish to really keep it watertight and waterproof. Uh, sometimes I'll actually put varnish on the front as well, just to make sure that it provides kind of a solid surface for popping the fly if you really want to make it into a hard uh, body popper uh, from the front side. And um, so it gives it that a little bit, a little bit nicer sound in the water. You can also use a Dremel tool to cup out that front side before you put the hook in or after. And then um, once you coat it that way as well, it does provide a little bit of a cup uh, to be able to push a little more water. I actually prefer this uh, traditional style because it doesn't move as much water. It's a little more subtle and sometimes it doesn't spook the fish as easily. That's pretty much it. It's, um, it's how we paint these eyes on, and if you have questions, just send an email to samsonebug at gmail.com. Thanks.